What's going on everybody? Welcome into my first college quarterback scouting video where this offseason ja the Jaguars obviously need a quarterback and the front office if they're smart they're going to be pursuing one of these quarterbacks in this upcoming draft. So this offseason I'm going to be gradually coming out with a quarterback kind of scouting report on every single quarterback that comes out. So that's something you're interested in. Please subscribe to the channel for future videos just like this. And, you know, I was wanting to make a video about the Jaguars and the fit with Nick Foles and everything, but I kind of wanted to start off and kind of talk about one of these college prospects just because that's what I'm kind of most interested in right now. And, you know, a lot of names are being thrown out there like Dwayne Haskins, Kyler Murray have been all around. But one guy that I kind of wanted to talk about is Missouri quarterback Drew Locke because he really hasn't been talked about much and he's a really, really interesting prospect in my eyes. So uh, in this video, we're going to go ahead and do a scouting report on Drew Locke. So let's get it. <laughs> Now before I go into him as an actual passer, I do want to kind of go over uh, some of his statistics. So he is 6'4", 225 pounds, so very, very solid frame, very, very durable as he started a total of 46 games at Missouri. He's a senior, so played four years, so started 46 games in those four years. His senior season, his stats, look he was just shy of 3,500 total yards, a 63% completion percentage. Uh, 28 touchdowns versus 8 interceptions. And uh, one good thing about him is that his completion percentage has increased every single year. So he's gotten gradually better. His freshman year, it was 49%. Then it increased to 55%. Then 58%. Then his senior season, like I said, it was 63%. So that's one good thing that you're seeing development in that sense. Now when you watch Drew Locke on film, the very first thing that stands out is his arm strength incredible arm strength I mean I know it's cliche to say this guy can make every throw but this guy can make every throw um he reminds me of kind of like Josh Allen last year where there's just a lot of throws that you make where you just say wow while there's other times where you know it's not necessarily very good and I'll kind of go over that a little bit later but you know I love his arm strength the guy can just zip it and in the NFL nowadays, arm strength is getting increasingly important just because, you know, cornerbacks are just getting so much better. The, uh, the separation with receivers, the window is just so much shorter. So, you know, a lot of times you got to throw the anticipation. you got to be able to get it there very, very quick. And that's one thing that Drew Locke really does have, and he probably has the strongest arm of any quarterback coming into this draft. So I really like that about him. Also his throwing mechanics. Now his upper body mechanics are great. His throw is high, tight, quick. He just, like I said, he just zips it. And you know, it's not, you know, it doesn't look like Blake Bortles or like a Sam Darnold or like Alex Smith where he brings the ball down here, winds up and throw it. He has no hitch. It's quick, a quick delivery just like that. Now, you know, one thing that his mechanics, while his upper body mechanics are good, lower body mechanics, not as good. The guy, his footwork is very, very inconsistent. You know, there. You know, when you look at him, there's some throws that he he makes he he makes th good throws even when he is flat footed. But there's way too often times where you know his 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 shoulders are square with his feet and he just kind of throws purely with his arm and he kind of just kind of darts it out there. Now there are throws that he's able to do that and it looks pretty impressive. But a lot of those throws. It's different when you're backing out of pressure and you're kind of backing up about to get hit and you throw like that. But when the pocket is completely clean, there's no reason to not set your feet. And that's something that's probably going to bite you in the NFL where you don't have as much, where the pocket isn't as clean and the receivers aren't getting as much separation. So uh, the footwork stuff, it, it definitely does concern me. One thing I noticed about him is when he plays teams that aren't as good, he's he's able to pretty much make every throw. I mean, he sits back there in a clean pocket and just picks teams apart. But when he plays teams like Alabama or when he played Georgia, when there was a lot more pressure in his face, the throws really aren't as good. You know, they just, they weren't really as much there. And 
that does kind of concern me about him. Now, you know, in a lot of these games, like when he was playing Alabama, when he was playing Georgia, you could tell that really there wasn't really much out there when it comes to players that were getting all that open, but he really wasn't doing a good job of really fitting in windows and like throwing with good anticipation. Now, one thing that really intrigues me about Drew Locke is that he has a ton of upside. I mean, when you see this guy, there's so many throws that he just makes look incredible. I mean, he throws a great deep ball. Uh, he can he can really hit any anybody anywhere on a field. Some of his out routes are just incredible. And you know, a lot of times with nowadays, man, you're trying to set guys up for like bubble screens. You try to get you try to get the ball from like hash to hash really really quickly. And you know, a guy like you know a guy like this guy Drew Locke and guys like Dwayne Haskins, they're able to get it there a lot better than maybe a guy like Will Greer can. But you know, the, just his upside. It's a lot like Josh Allen. The upside is great. He's also even good on his feet. I don't have his. Uh, rushing statistics in front of me, but the guy, if he has to run it, um, he could run it really well. But, you know, some things that he has to improve on, man, uh, just his footwork when it comes to just having consistent footwork. You're not going to be able to throw with just your arm and not step into balls as much in the NFL. You can get away with it with uh, the lack of separation or with the sep amount of separation Missouri's offense can get when they're out there running a spread offense, but that's something that you really have to work on. He also has to work on obviously reading a defense, and that's one thing a lot of quarterbacks have to work on. But some of the, you know, he, he'll make one throw where it's just an incredible throw, and then the next time it, you, you're wondering what the heck he's doing. Another thing is that he has to work on is just being able to, like, when under pressure, just make the easy throw, make the check out down throw. You don't have to be a hero, but there's just, there's so many things that really does intrigue me with him just with his cannon of an arm. I mean, he's a natural thrower of the football, which. We haven't had on the Jaguars when it comes to natural throwers of the football. And, you know, he's played against a lot of tougher competition with being in the SEC. He's got a really good, durable frame. And, like, when he when he has time to throw it, he basically makes all the throws. He just has to kind of work on setting his feet. And, like, how do I feel like his fit is with the Jaguars? I don't know how well he fits with the Jaguars. At least in the first round. If we're going to draft him in the first round, I don't want to draft him in the first round. I'll just go on and say that. I don't think he's worth the number seven overall pick. However, you know, if we were to go out and get a guy like Nick Foles, I wouldn't mind drafting this guy in the second round just because his upside is really, really good. He's just going to be a project. You know, with when I look at him, I think he maybe fits in more with, like, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who have Jameis Winston but still have, like, questions behind him. They can have that guy that can really play a year or, you know, play at least have a season before inserting Drew Locke or maybe even, like, the Denver Broncos potentially with, uh, you know, they have Case Keenum under center, but, you know, they could potentially bring in uh, Drew Locke into their system. But, you know, really his fit with the Jaguars, I don't think it's there unless we bring in, you know, an established quarterback, you know, whether it be like a Flacco or whether it be like a Nick Foles. Um, and I definitely don't want to draft him in the first round. So if he's there in the second round and the Jaguars didn't pick somebody in the first round, I could say... I would say, you know, maybe pull the trigger, but, you know, there's a lot of things that he has to work on. He's definitely like the Josh Allen of the draft where a ton of upside, but has to has to really learn how to read defense and has to work on a lot. So thank you guys all for watching my video. Let me know what you guys think of Drew Locke in the comments down below, and let me know what quarterback you guys want me to do a scouting report on next. So this is UCF Jaguar with GenJag.com, and I'm out.